today's video we're going to be having a look at embedded systems. Now when we think of a computer system there's three elements. There's an input, a process and an output. Now an input doesn't just have to be what we imagine when we think of a traditional computer system. So it doesn't have to just be a keyboard or a mouse. There's lots of different types of input that could be used by a computer system. For instance there might be a button that's pressed or a sensor detects something or even that there's voice control. A process just means there's some sort of logic or calculation that's going on. So if something happens, then do something else. Those types of decisions could be classed as a process. And an output doesn't just have to be a monitor or a printer. There's all sorts of outputs that could be used. It could be switching a light on or turning a motor or even heating a heating element. So when we think of a computer system, it doesn't just have to be the traditional laptop, desktop or even smartphone. There's lots of types of computer systems and we're going to be looking at a specific type called an embedded system. Programs are just electronic signals and when we think of a traditional computer system, then this means that they're saved separately from the hardware. However, in an embedded system, they're known as firmware because the hardware and the software are joined together. The programs are actually saved on a chip and they're programmed by the manufacturer so they can't be changed very easily. So the embedded system has a very dedicated system that can't be altered. It's not like on our computers we can upgrade the operating system or on smartphones we can add apps to allow it to do other things. With an embedded system it's got to follow a very dedicated set procedure and if it needs to change from that then the whole thing needs to be reprogrammed. So an embedded system has to have a dedicated purpose. If we take this for instance, now I took this apart earlier so I can show you a dedicated system, an embedded system. This used to be a microphone. There was an input which was from the microphone device itself and the output was an LCD display or even that it could be saved onto a computer using this USB device. There's also a battery here as well, but the majority of it is made up of these chips. This is a dedicated system. It only does one thing and it can't be programmed to do something else. If I wanted it to start using it as a word processor, it just wouldn't work. The hardware is not capable of being changed in such a dramatic fashion. So an embedded system has to have a dedicated purpose. Now a smartphone is not classed as an embedded system itself but it does contain embedded systems, so embedded systems can be part of a much larger device. If we take for example my smartphone, at the moment it's showing an image. If I turn the smartphone, the accelerometer inside knows to change the image to portrait or landscape, so it can stay upright no matter how I change the phone. So the accelerometer inside my smartphone is an embedded system, but the smartphone itself isn't. So let's start off in my study. This is where I seem to spend most of my time. On my desk you can see I have a smartphone which as we've already discussed is not an embedded system itself but does contain embedded systems. There's also a laptop but that's not an embedded system. Further on we have a digital camera which is an embedded system. It can't be reprogrammed to do something else. And there's also a franking machine which I use to pay for postage. And that's also classed as an embedded system. I also have an all-in-one printer, scanner and photocopier and that contains several different embedded systems. So let's have a look in the living room. We must have a couple of embedded systems in here. I've got an iPad but that isn't an embedded system itself but it does contain embedded systems. There's a smart TV that connects to the Wi-Fi so that is classed as an embedded system. There's also a set-top box, which is under the TV, and a Blu-ray player, and they're both classed as embedded systems. They can't be reprogrammed to do something else, for instance. So let's have a look in the kitchen. The microwave, kettle and toaster do all contain embedded systems. The kettle and toaster are very simple, but the microwave allows users to select an option from several pre-programmed settings, but it's still classed as an embedded system because you can't change it to do something else. It can only select one of those pre-programmed settings. The dishwasher also uses several embedded systems. And I've got a smart speaker connected to the Wi-Fi, and that also contains embedded systems. 
in the utility room. The iron and washing machine are both embedded systems, as is the tumble dryer and even the heating and hot water controller. But embedded systems are not just contained within the home. Intelligent traffic lights use sensors to monitor for cars on the side roads and if it detects a car it will stop the traffic on the main road to allow the traffic from the side road to join it. These are different to standard traffic lights as they just work on a timer and require no real processing power but intelligent traffic lights would be using an embedded system. So to recap, an embedded system is one where the programming is hardwired into the hardware. It's known as firmware. It also has to have a dedicated purpose, which can't be changed very easily, and it may be part of a larger system.